Solve with this internet shit. Scramble TV. Everybody say hello to Jenny Cross, a rising chef here in Philadelphia. Hi, Jenny. Hi. How you doing? Not bad. How's your drink? Oh, it's good. You're working on it. Look I at that. am working on it. What are you drinking? I'm drinking Jameson and Diet Coke. Got to keep it girly. Yeah. We gotta Watch keep... the curves. Yes. Well, you're doing a good job there. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, we're gonna get a, uh, we're gonna get around to some of the really exotic stuff you're cooking now. But first, uh, tell me about um, your adventures at the Food Network. Oh my gosh. Um, the show I was on was called uh, Worst Cooks in America. I know, it sounds bad, but they actually were training us to be, um, at the end of this 10-day competition, five-star restaurant level chefs. When I make rice, if it looks like it's about to burn, I think it's done. <laughs> Usually when I try to cook, I add way too many seasonings to hide mistakes in my food. I'm just gonna put a little cayenne pepper onto my peanut butter fish. I have too many ideas and it ends up like all these ideas just explode and make this like big mess. When I'm saying hot worse. mess, I was not kidding. That is literally a hot mess. Mm. Wow. So, so the idea was to take people who really couldn't cook, they were lousy cooks, coach them up so they become good chefs. Awesome so then it was chef. good to lose that. It was good to lose. I had been trying for years to go to uh, culinary school, and I never knew that the show, like me stumbling into an audition, would ever end up like this, to where I'm at now. Like, I can't, it's, it's amazing to me. And This is a great country, isn't it, Jenny? It is. Uh, so, so uh, how are you uh, progressing as a chef? What are you up to now? Right now, I am uh, working at this uh, little place called Watkins Drinkery. We actually just celebrated our one-year anniversary last week, and it's just this little place where it's um, upscale bar food with a lot of like wild game influences and, and just like a wild game twist to everything. Like one of my so the wings are from exotic animals, and not just yes, right. it'll be like pheasant wings, or like <laughs> instead of like a like a BLT, it'll be like boar belly, like boar bacon on it, like on your BLT. Like it's crazy stuff like that. I love working with these like weird ingredients. So is, so some of the things you're now learning to cook wild game wise. Oh, you wouldn't, you would love it. Um, kangaroo, kangaroo is actually um, just a little bit saltier and oilier than ground beef. You would, <laughs> you would never guess yeah. that, right? Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> and and, and uh, how do you prepare it? Any, like, Burgers, you, a kangaroo burgers? I or? would love a kangaroo burger. I'm actually, I might steal that. Maybe like a little kangaroo slider. But right now we're doing a kangaroo nacho. It's, I just saute it, just like ground beef. People come in uh, to a place like that. Um, they're there to drink, for sure. Oh yeah. We have an excellent beer selection. Um, our beer menu and beer list is, is is rival to a lot of yeah. beer bars in this city. And then when they, you flip over our menu and yeah. you look at it, you would never expect to see like quail on. Yeah, see, that's what I'm interested in. What happens when, when you know, they look, they look at quail and kangaroo and ostrich? What, do, do people, some people like go, whoa, forget it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have people actually laugh at our menu and it takes every bone in my body not to come out of the kitchen and be like you know what it's actually good maybe you should open your mind like yeah, yeah. i know you're you're also uh, a baker right yes um one actually this is um one of the things i'm most famous for steve is on my final challenge i did a dessert it was a liquid center um, chocolate tort basically like your standard chocolate lava cake. You know, the, the things you can get at Domino's for like two for five dollars or some if shit. If you want to do it your way, you're welcome to, but I'd prefer it if you did it the way I showed you. It is like watching a horror movie. It's like your worst nightmare unfolding before your eyes. Now's not the time to have a breakdown. Let's do it. Not. Do you prefer to cook food or bake? Because they're different, oh. they're, they're both, they're different things, right? Well, it depends who I'm cooking for. Yeah. Because if I really want to, we'll put it this way, if I got a guy at my house that 
I'm interested in. Does that happen often, by the way? Mm, maybe. Okay. I, I'm actually striking out. I, I can't get a dude. Really? Yeah. It's terrible. Maybe it's the kangaroo burgers. Maybe, yeah, they think they're a little bit freaked out. I'm a little creepy. No, so. not at all. Ah. Oh. You don't know me that well yet. <laughs> All right, so uh, the show's called Drinking Again, so let's talk about uh, mm. drinking a little bit. I know you're drinking uh, Jameson's here, which means you're uh, a, a guy's girl. But I'm a chef, baby. And yet chefs drink uh, whiskey, is that it? Chefs need to drink whiskey. You're a yeah. gin girl too, right? Oh, my favorite gin, and thank you, Philly, for this. Blue Coat. Local gin. My favorite. It's serious. Like, that was my first drink I ever bought was a gin and tonic and it was always my father's favorite drink and I would always you know sneak him when I was little and uh, it's I didn't always like the abrasiveness of tangerine and plus it, you stink like it too afterwards you know what I'm I'm a gin guy too and I don't like tangerine as well yeah I don't like, like tang is overrated I, I, I drink Bombay Bombay, then you would like Blue Coat. How do you oh, I know feel? Blue Coat, yeah. How do you feel about Blue Coat? No, it's excellent. It's an excellent gin. Gin's making a real, gin had a bad reputation. Yeah. It goes back to the Prohibition and bathtub gin used to make people go blind. Uh, so where, do, where do you want to be in uh, five years? Basically, I want my own business in the next uh, five years. Either that or be an executive chef. I know I'm on the right path, though. I know that I have talent. I know that I have skill. And... I have amazed myself from where I was, like smearing peanut butter on fish, to <laughs> like cooking kangaroo and quail and pheasant, like it's nothing. Well, I'm sure you're going to be where you want to be in five years. I'm going to try the kangaroo first, first chance I get, and thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Steve, and cheers. Cheers.